We're so excited to announce our new partnership with Therapy Notes. Whether you're looking to streamline your private practice or you're a solo clinician juggling it all, Therapy Notes has you covered. Rated 4.9 stars on Trustpilot. It's no wonder they're the most trusted EHR for behavioral health. Try Therapy Notes for two months free using the promo code MODERN today. Looking for ways to get more private pay clients? Thryzer is a payment app that makes out-of-network therapy more accessible. Thryzer verifies your clients' out-of-network benefits, so when they pay, they are only charged what they actually owe, while you continue to earn your full rate. Check out our special link, join.thryzer.com forward slash modern therapist, and use the code modern therapists to activate $2,500 in free payments with Thryzer. You're listening to the Modern Therapist Survival Guide, where therapists live, breathe, and practice as human beings. To support you as a whole person and a therapist, here are your hosts, Kurt Widhelm and Katie Vernoy. Welcome back, Modern Therapists. This is the Modern Therapist Survival Guide. I'm Kurt Widhelm with Katie Vernoy, and this is the podcast for therapists about the things that go on in our professions and in our practices. And oftentimes the conversations that don't seem to happen anywhere until they need to happen. And in our <laughs> ever you know, ongoing quest to continue to make sure that therapists are informed about everything. We are bringing one of our guests back from before, one of our former Therapy Reimagined speakers, a good friend of mine, Anita Avedian, LMFT. And she's here to talk about some trouble that happens. But <laughs> before we get to that, can you tell us who you are and what you're putting out into the world? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, I'm Anita Avedian. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, the executive director of Avedian Counseling Center and Anger Management 818. So we do offer therapy services throughout LA. We have five locations and we offer couples therapy, individual therapy, and we have over 12 groups a week right now for anger management and a social anxiety group. That's a nice big practice. And my assumption is that means that you have a nice, robust website, but you just had some trouble mm -hmm. with that website. Just tell us what happened. Yeah, of course. So I, this was in December. I had, uh, I didn't even realize this, but I received this letter marketing, several marketing letters from attorneys telling me that there's been a case that's been opened up against me for my website, angermanagement818.com. And it was because the website was not ADA compliant. And this was news for me because I don't think I had any idea of the requirements of what had to happen or that we needed to have websites to be compliant. My website person had never informed me of it. So it's literally information I've never heard as a therapist that we were responsible to make sure all of our websites are in compliance with ADA guidelines. So this was a surprise and a learning curve. And I've been working hard at making sure everyone is aware so that others don't go through what I'm going through. So I know that from some of our off the air conversations, but would you say what you're going through? Can you help our listeners understand the gravity of what it is that you're going through? So obviously there's a lawsuit out there and I selected an attorney to hire who I thought had a pretty good reputation in California. And so the attorney has helped me out a great deal. But with that, the demand of the person who is suing me is that I have to be compliant with what is supposed to be. I wrote it out. So it's WCAG 2.0 or 2.1 is where all websites need to be at at the minimum. And so, WCAG, can you yeah. tell me what that is? Do you know what that is? I don't. I, I am not an <laughs> IT person. I cannot describe it to you, but I could tell you that I could tell you a little bit of what's involved. Okay. Um, so if you have a if you have any images on your website, they have to have the I forget what it is. It's the alt um alt text. Alt text associated with it. So any pictures, any sounds, any audio, you if you have videos up, you should have the closed captions that are at least 95% accurate. So it doesn't count just that you have closed captions. They actually, you have to review it to make sure 
they capture more than 95% accuracy. And the videos, so if you have videos, they should have both closed captions and the, oh man, I'm blanking, the script uh, for it. Uh, transcript. Transcripts. Thank you. And that also has to be 95% accurate and up. So you have to kind of go through very labor intensive because what it can capture most softwares out there, it'll capture some of it or most of it, but definitely not at the expectation that you're supposed to be meeting. Navigation system. Don't ask me what it's supposed to be, but my navigation system was not ADA compliant. The contrast colors have to have a certain ratio of the colors. So they have for, to be far enough apart. Uh, yeah, it, there's literally like a percentage it has to meet for each page, for each area, for each section. Certain buttons have to be ADA compliant. There's there's a lot more involved. I'm just kind of sharing what some of that is. And it's not easy to upkeep and to maintain. Wow. Okay. So you did not have these things and someone came to sue you. And so you had to get an attorney and now you're in the process of making these corrections on your yeah. website? Yeah. Yeah. And the and the corrections itself cost a, like over $10,000, just so you know, because I have four websites that I'm having to, not that I had to correct all four, but I am. Yeah. So the corrections cost a lot of money because it, it really is a lot of changes. And to keep up with it, you have to, you know, you get reports in with deep scans every month to let you know where things are at. But yeah, there's a lot to keep up with. You can't have PDFs on your website. PDFs are not ADA compliant. If you have any documents up, you have to make sure that also has the alt text and description of anything that is needed to have. So Microsoft Word makes it easy where you can test the accessibility, but PDFs itself are not. So you'll see that that gets converted to uh, documents instead, like Word documents. So on, on our listeners' behalf, this just feels like an avalanche of, oh no, websites are out of compliance and the sky is falling and all of this kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're just throwing around terms like scans and like where where are people getting these scans? Is, yeah. is this like go and type into a search engine like website ADA compliance thing? Does yeah. that then put you on a list of somebody else to sue you if your website's not in compliance? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I can tell you this. My understanding is, yes, you definitely have people with disabilities who do get upset that the website is not ADA compliant, so it doesn't make it easy for them to see or hear or understand what's going on. And so, so of course, there are going to be cases where they deserve the right to see and hear and, you know, be able to, to basically whatever you have out there for the public that they too can access. But I think there has been what, what's really out there with what's happening right now is there are law firms who literally scan random websites throughout California and they see all the websites that are not ADA compliant and they'll have people who will pursue the lawsuit and say, by the way, I'm deaf and you had this video up and I couldn't follow it. Uh, so I'm hurt and here's my lawsuit and pay up. And then keep up with it thereafter because if you don't, uh, we'll come back uh, for more. So there's demands there. Or someone who's blind, they get on the website and they can't, you know, the, the transcripts aren't there for them to read through, uh, I mean, to to for it to read out loud. So they can pursue as well. But right now it's really, there's a lot of attorneys out there who are in the in this business and searching for websites that are not ADA compliant and opening up lawsuits. It's in the thousands. So there's an element of this where it feels very predatory by these attorneys, but there's mm -hmm. the other the other side, which is making our websites accessible. I mean, yeah. What do you see as the things that you're doing that feel most important to do for accessibility and that are kind of reasonable to do for a therapist that maybe doesn't have $10,000 to completely redo their website? And this isn't, we're not saying yeah. this is legal advice, yeah, just yeah. kind of the yeah. things that you found most helpful mm -hmm. in your journey. 
for making your websites more accessible? I mean, definitely when it comes to videos for the closed captions and the and the transcripts, I could tell you my staff has been working on that for two months now to it and it and it's still not done. So it's very labor intensive if you want to do it the right way. If you have it on YouTube and you know share that this is on a third party platform, say something like that, that may get you a little bit out of liability where YouTube provides the closed captions and the transcripts, but you still really have to review to make sure it's, you know, pretty accurate with what's being shared. In general, I mean, look, like, obviously I I went through this. It's not a fun experience to go through. I'm getting into trouble and our CPH insurance does not cover it. My umbrella policy does not cover it. So you're not covered. None of us are. Mm -hmm. And so, because it's considered discriminatory, right? So we're not covered for this. And no one's really told us, like, by the way, you guys, as therapists, you have to have your websites ADA compliant. Uh, Most therapists I talk to about, they don't, they they hear it and they're like, ah, not a big deal. We don't really have to. Like, okay. So, but, um, but I, I mean, obviously if the website person is knowledgeable, great because they can keep up, but my not my website person had no idea at all. And I'm hearing it more and more out there that most website people for therapists are not aware of and or will say, I can't do this ADA compliant because it's really challenging to change it all up to for it to become compliant. Therapy Notes is the highest rated EHR for behavioral health, combining secure billing, scheduling, telehealth, documentation, and even e-prescribe in one easy-to-use software. And they're always adding new features to help therapists provide better care to their patients. In addition to tutorial videos, live webinars, and articles designed to help you along the way, they also offer free live customer support seven days a week with new extended hours to better accommodate West Coast customers. Use promo code MODERN for two months free and see what all the hype is about. The the conversations that Kurt and I had with our web developer was... If you're 100% compliant, it is a much more expensive website to put together. If you're partially compliant, then, you know, there's some expense, but it's not this $10,000 worth of, mm-hmm. of kind of building it out. And and I don't know that there's any safe level, right? <laughs> right. Or is there? Is there well, a way no. to determine how, how compliant you are? It's typically 95% is the magic number. So long as you're 95% and up, you're probably going to stay out of trouble. Okay. Um, How do I know if I'm 95% compliant? You can go through different websites, like Ecomback will do it. And I'll talk about Ecomback because I'm using them as a service that they can do deep scans. They can do a free audit for anyone who wants to try it. And they could give you reports back because I had that, you know, when I initially found out about it, I went to Accessivy and I downloaded their widget. And, uh, and the, and my attorney said, actually, you're going to get yourself in more trouble using them because they come off saying that they're compliant, but they're really not. They just help mm. it become more accessible. So apparently there's certain attorneys that search for people who use accessibility and sue them okay. because the platform is not, <laughs> it's not a, compl- it's really not about compliancy. So, so with accessibility, my website became 80% compliant, not good enough. So we had to like redo the whole thing. And so e-compact is where you get that percentage number? That's one. You can find out. There's a lot of websites you could do a deep scan, like people who help people become compliant. They'll do a free audit for you. They'll do a deep scan for you. Usually people use three different programs to do the scan to capture everything. And so I think that's a great thing for all therapists to put their website through. It's free. Find out where you stand. Um, see what it what would be involved to implement all of the changes. So with, for example, the company I used, Ecomback, they let you know, here are all the changes that's going to be required, and here's what the cost will be. So they're, they're typically, um, I mean, depends on the website, but I've heard them charge certain people 2000 or 3000 or 5000 depending on how complex the website is. But they're doing all four of my websites, which is why the cost has higher. 
Got so, it. so, um, but there's also another company I checked with and they were going to be $10,000 for one website. So there, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, 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 the financial component really varies, but, um, but I do like the company I'm using. They've been pretty responsive and on top of it and friendly. And, you know, they, they really kind of help you see, uh, what needs to change and why, what numbers it has to meet. Uh, what makes it ADA compliant. So um, so I've liked using them for that reason. I've heard of other ones that are really good too, but just a lot more expensive, which I didn't want to get more into. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. You're talking about the website developers not really understanding all of the compliance stuff. And I'm wondering in kind of your attorney discussions as well, what were you magically able to find somebody who's like, yes, I know all of the things that you need to do. And, or was there just kind of like, even within the legal space, there's a lot of people that aren't quite fully sure of what all of the laws on this are. I haven't searched for a website person yet who is aware. I'm having these guys train my web person. And so my web guy is working with them to make it uh, ADA compliance. So he's also learning what they are in the process. And the attorney I hired, they also do a training for the web web people. So part of the fee of my, uh, the legal fees involves that too. It's an educational component to train the web person with how to upkeep the website to make sure it's ADA compliant. It's a lot. <laughs> so then you have to pay the web person to attend all that too. Yeah. It yeah. just seems like it's very cost prohibitive to have a website if you really are, if this is a risk. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems like the simpler your website, the more likely you can keep it ADA compliant without it getting yes. too, too expensive. But then there's that other element of if you're a group practice, if you have multiple businesses, there's an opportunity that you have to navigate between pages. There's a lot of other things that are going on there. And, and I guess for, folks who have big businesses, it's like, pay attention to this for right. folks who are, are, you know, kind of smaller practices. Do you feel like, and, and maybe have a page or two on their website, do you feel like it's doable to like start from the beginning with ADA compliance? I'm, you know, now that I'm in it, I, if, if someone has the patience to learn what's involved, it is doable. Mm -hmm. I personally don't know how to create a website. I know most therapists I think do at this point. I don't know how to create a website. I don't understand the lingo, none of it. So, yeah. Um, so I just have my web person do it all. We're in meetings with these guys. So he's, you know, every couple of weeks he's updating, updating, they're updating, you know, it's, it's literally, it's been a few months now we've all been updating and it's never ending, but it's uh, but once you learn like what to expect, how to, you know, colors to have contrast to have font, font, font size, name it, it, it all matters. Um, but to answer your question, I think the more simple a website is, the easier it will be. The more prettier a website is with images and pictures and videos and audio, the uh, more at risk you are if you're not careful around uh, all of what needs to get done. Well, in, when you're talking about like alt text as well as, you know, some of the like transcripts, those kinds of things, that actually helps with SEO. Oh, yeah. uh, we started doing alt text for our pictures because of that. And and so we've improved our compliancy because we've added pictures with alt text, which yeah. which improves SEO. So there's there's potentially a benefit here to yes. having these things going on for sure. And if you have transcripts on your on your website for for example, a podcast that's chock full of keywords that right. people can search, right? So I think there's there's elements to this that can kind of fold into other business goals, but it seems like some of the back end stuff is truly about accessibility, like being able to navigate mm -hmm. using a reader or those types of things. It seems like those those elements are much easier if they're folded in at the beginning, but right. may be cost prohibitive at the beginning for folks just starting their practices. Right. And, you know, you pointed out a great point. It's a, it's a silver lining that I looked at, which is in the end, this is going to help us with SEO, but more importantly, it's also going to reach an audience that we would have missed otherwise. Sure. Uh, you know, we don't realize how many disabilities there are out there and how much this can actually help bring in folks who do have disabilities who otherwise would not have been able to uh, access the website's content. 
and what they could have gained from it. Uh, but definitely the benefit is going to be SEO with it. And Google will like your website more because it recognizes that you're compliant. Mm, right. Interesting. So there's that benefit too. Mm-hmm. So I had to like justify all this in my head. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's costing money, but in the end, silver lining. No. <laughs> Uh, as part of your process, I mean, you found out about being sued through people selling you, you know, basically defense services. Yes. So I, I want to kind of talk about that part of the process yeah. here a little bit too, that you were getting sued without being known about it. Yeah. I'm also guessing that you were not given any chance to have like a time frame to make corrections, that this was just immediately yeah. to like damages and yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. There's no, that the, you have to pay up and then you have to keep with the changes. Otherwise they could come back for a lot more. So there's not an opportunity to rectify it. No. This is, you are discriminatory and out of compliance, full yeah. stop. Yeah. Damages are awarded and you have to fix everything yeah. immediately. Yeah. And, and you have to upkeep for the next five years. And, the, and that's, and, and that's part of the agreement. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fun times. Very few times that Katie and I are just kind of left speechless on <laughs> these kinds of things. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, like you said, there's legitimate reasons for ADA to have this in space, uh, have this in place for people with disabilities. And there are trolls out there as you're describing on this. As you're talking more about this with you know the people in your life, are you finding that other therapy practices are running into this? Is it small businesses in general, all walks of life kinds of things? I guess I'm ultimately getting to why do you think it was you that got targeted in this? It's you know, it's a website that attorneys scanned, or perhaps this individual who the person suing me is like three hours away. So uh, I don't think they were really reaching out for the services. They were offended that they tried watching one of the videos, a 15 second video that did not have captions on it. Most of my videos had closed captions, by the way, we're talking about a couple that did not. So put that aside. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> like take a deep breath. <laughs> Use my <laughs> anger management skills. <laughs> so, the, so um, but the these attorneys, they the DA of Los Angeles and the DA of San Francisco uh actually were going after this law firm because since 2020, they've literally done like a shakedown of all small businesses or a lot of small businesses in California. And I think it increased by 300% one year later. It's literally wow. a business. I can't explain it. It's not, um, again, I just want to say, obviously, for someone who goes on a website is legit, they're offended. You know, typically, if I want to see or hear something, I'll contact the website person and request it. I mean, that's like the, you know, I, I guess, nice thing to do. And we would correct it and help them see it or understand it, whatever the needs are. But this is not that. So this is not an actual potential client. This is this is the law firm that the two DAs of San Francisco and LA pursued and and started to investigate because of their practices. And but because it's a law and we as individuals pass this as a law, uh, they're in the right. So they can literally sue us for breaking this law. So um it's been in, I think it's been a law for over 10 years now. Uh, my wish was that CAMFT or a professional association made it more clear and brought awareness to this and helped us uh, become aware of this and uh, provided resources for it. Literally, it I had never even heard of it. And, you know, so it was, it was really like a surprise to get like four different soliciting letters from different law firms. And I have no idea who this individual, like it was just a, you know, surprise in that way. So I don't want anyone else to go through this, which is why I literally just started notifying so many therapists, whether it's Facebook groups or whatever, to let them know, um, you guys look into this because, you know, don't get into trouble. 
just popping in quickly to let you know that Thrizer is a payment app that gets you more private pay clients. Thrizer links with your client's health insurance and verifies how much their insurance covers for out-of-network therapy. When clients pay for sessions with Thrizer, they are only charged what they actually owe. Thrizer covers the rest of your fee and works with their insurance to get the reimbursement. That means that your clients can use Thrizer to save upfront with their out-of-network benefits when paying for your sessions instead of submitting super bills and waiting for reimbursement. Thrizer is a great way to collect payments from your clients. Like all payment processors, their credit card fee is 3%, which is the only fee you pay for using the platform. Thrizer is a mission-driven company that believes therapy should be accessible to everyone and therapists should earn a good living. Their platform helps do just that. Clients only ever pay what they owe while you continue to earn your full rate. Check out our special link, join.thrizer.com forward slash modern therapist and use the code modern therapists to activate $2,500 in free payments with Thrizer. <laughs> I think the the point that you made was really good, which is, I, I think we've even had this where somebody wasn't able to access some of the content. And this was before we were doing transcripts and everything for for all of our stuff and said, hey, this is what I need. Can you do it? And we're like, okay, let's see what we can do. And it seems like person by person, that can be something that's helpful. Granted, it's not, you know, you would hope that you could be accessible enough that that wouldn't be the case. But all of the things that you're describing and the laws, it sounds like they're fairly rigid. There's there's a lot there. And so there's not this opportunity to have that conversation, to make corrections, to do the things. It's just kind of this law firm that's going after folks. And so we're talking about risk, right? Like what right. is the risk that my website's going to be pursued by a law firm like this or, or mm -hmm. law firms like this? And I think that's, that's one element. And I think one element that I, I think is important to talk about is being accessible and trying to think about that because I think what you're saying, the, the silver lining of people being able yeah. to access your content who, yeah. who who were not able to access it before, I think is as well. But I think for for looking at the the risk, at the the liability around these laws, I mean, what is the state of legislation? Like, you know, how are we how are we understanding this? And and is there a law, a specific law that we can look at to kind of understand what the compliance requirements are? Uh, there is, and I wish I had it written down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can add it to the show notes later. We'll, 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 there is a yeah. law. We'll, we'll, yes. we'll put it in the show notes. But, there but is what's a law. the state of legislation? Yeah. Yes, there is a law. Um, and I think there was legislation to make it even more strict where okay. it was going to be almost impossible for people to keep up with it. Like right now, it's already almost impossible to keep up with it. But there's going to be a more strict legislation coming through around this that will. Yeah, make it almost impossible. But to my that, and that's what um, I was informed about a month ago. What is what does that mean? I mean, what is the purpose of of laws that become unfollowable? Like that doesn't make sense to me. And it, what's sad is, to my knowledge, my understanding is that so you have, let's say ADA says, okay, this is what we expect for you guys to follow as websites, but they have not come up with a widget that's been approved yet that will make it compliant. And when, so when you have like a law like this in place, it's very expensive to keep up with it. It's almost impossible to keep up with it. And there's no approved widget where they could say, okay, if you guys have this widget that you're using, you're pretty safe. Like they, so, so that's where the frustrations are. You know, um, it would be great where a widget comes around where people can just implement or pay 50 or 100 a month for and your website would be ADA compliant. But but that's not there. Well, I'm even thinking that if the 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 legislation and the the regulation is actually at the individual business owner, it feels like it's in the wrong place. I mean, yeah. I think about all of the, you know, the different web platforms and the the the. I, I can't even think of the name of the background. We are like not tech people trying to have this conversation. And right. It's crazy. But it's, you know, like the, the, the framework for your website, you know, the, there's a lot of them with WordPress or, or Squarespace or whatever you put things together and you're allowed to put it together, not ADA compliant. Like that's not built in mm -hmm. to the, the platform, the, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Kurt? Yeah. And you know, part of what I'm 
thinking here is just kind of where where these laws generally fall is if you're a business operating in a public space, you have to meet ADA requirements unless there's certain like physical structure sorts of things. Like if your building was built before ADA was in place, you're kind of grandfathered in. If your website was built before ADA was put in place, you're very strange. Um, but <laughs> And so you're expected to meet up with these requirements and you're expected to continue to know what the laws require of you, that ignorance in these situations is not a defense. It's not right. something that you're able to do. And this is where, you know, I'm I, being a law and ethics guy and, and being connected to a lot of people, I, it's this weird kind of space when I get text like I did from Anita where it's just like hey I'm being sued you should probably check out your websites but also just trying to sp spread the message and we're like how soon can you be on the podcast and talk about <laughs> probably <laughs> one of the weirdest spaces to to be in in your life but a lot of this comes down to yeah we do want to have this responsibility Anita's going through all of the kind of wonderful reframing that you know she is through all of this and helping to spread this message to everybody because it is something where there's already a lot of costs to getting into this field but it's cheaper than being sued yeah yeah that's for sure i figured out the word so okay. <laughs> cuz this may be legislation that we want to or or advocacy want to do like the the themes or the templates mm -hmm. that people create their websites on. Yeah. It was theme. I was yes. like, what is it? <laughs> yes, I love it. But if if those yeah. could could be required to be updated to be ADA compliant, it would give us a lot of a lot of background, right? Like we yeah. would we would be building into a compliant platform and then it would be about keeping the the you know the alt text and the other things and and all of that that would would allow for new content to be accessible, mm -hmm. but but because they're not, and because there's there's all of this uh, legislation that's being regulated without any real help or widgets or appropriate themes, because we're we're in this space where we are business owners, and especially as our businesses grow, we become bigger targets because right. they think we have money. Right. Um, we got to pay attention to this. Yeah. So any any last minute pieces of advice for our audience, Anita? I mean, do do the free scan. I mean, that's it's free. Just see where your website is at. I know a lot of people started using Accessibility or certain widgets. Be careful because they say they're compliant, but they're really not. And they're literally law firms looking to see if you're using those widgets to see you as well. Like it's like you're not safe using it. Um, it's great. Like it assists you know, it, it assists for people with accessibility issues, but it's not going to make you compliant with it. There's something I do want to add real quick, because I know this comes up. Some people research on Google and they say, oh, I thought if you have 15 employees or more, then you have to be compliant. That's a title one issue. Our websites is a title three issue. It's just you that has your website and that's already at risk. So there's a lot of therapists who Google search that, but that's title one. That That's like an employee thing. Title three is this one. Yeah. You are not lawyers and you are, <laughs> I, I mean, even yeah. those of us who, who talk a lot of, you know, law and ethics sorts of things, yeah. we talk about the specific parts of the law that we know. And yes. this is, you know, a fantastic thing that I see a lot in just kind of talking about laws and ethics sorts of things is, oh, but if I ignore the 99% of things that I didn't look at, then I can do some mental gymnastics into trying to be correct. Yeah. And thank you for pointing out that there's a lot more out there. And that's why you need to have competent legal people. And it's very much something that will keep you out of even more expensive trouble. Yeah. For sure. Once you finish panicking, we would love to have you <laughs> check out how to get in touch with Anita. Where can people do that? Uh, sure. So you can 
call me. My number is 818-426-2495 or check out my website at Avedian Counseling Center, A-V-E-D-I-A-N counselingcenter.com. And you can check out our show notes over at mtsgpodcast.com. Follow us on our social media and join our Facebook group, The Modern Therapist Group, where you can continue on these conversations. And until next time, I'm Kurt Whithelm with Katie Vernoy and Anita Avedian. Don't forget to check out Therapy Notes, the best practice management solution for behavioral health. And use promo code MODERN for two months free. Care more and worry less with Therapy Notes. Remember to check out Thryzer for a new way to attract and retain cash pay clients. It's a win-win concept that makes out-of-network therapy more accessible while you earn your full rate. Visit join.thryzer.com forward slash modern therapist for more information and to get set up in minutes. And use the code modern therapists for $2,500 in free payments on Thryzer. Thank you for listening to the Modern Therapist Survival Guide. Learn more about who we are and what we do at mtsgpodcast.com. You can also join us on Facebook and Twitter. And please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes. 